the module that we are going to discuss today is on measurement scales. Students, you use a lot of measuring instruments in your life and these include the measuring tapes, the weighing machines, thermometers and many other things. So we are going to discuss these and many more measuring scales as we use in research. The main objectives of this module are number one, to understand about the various types of measurement scales. Number two, to understand the characteristics of measurement scales. Number three, to learn about the uses of measurement scales in statistical analysis. Measurement can be defined as the assignment of numbers to objects and events according to logically acceptable rules. The number system is highly logical and offers a multiplicity of possibilities of further logical manipulations. A scale represents a system of ordered marks or points at fixed intervals used as a reference standard in measurement. For example, a ruler whose scale is in inches or a weighing machine whose scale is in kilograms or pounds. However, in addition to these physical scales, we have psychological measuring tests which we call scales. These generally are paper and pencil instruments like TESS, Likert's and Thurston's attitude scales and are in this category. A measuring scale should possess the following attributes and allow for these logical manipulations. Magnitude is the quantum or quantity in which the attribute exists in various instances of the phenomena. It allows us to tell whether one instance of the attribute is greater or less than or equal to another instance of the attribute. If x gets a score of 20 on an aggressiveness scale and y a score of 25, we can say that y is more aggressive than x. Equal intervals denote that the magnitude of the attribute represented by a unit of measurement on the scale is equal regardless of where on the scale the unit falls. A difference in heights between 60 inches and 65 inches is equal to the difference in height between 67 inches and 72 inches. However, when working with psychological phenomena, it may not be possible to interpret the equality of units at different points of scale. For example, a difference in IQs between 170 and 190 may not be considered to be equal to the difference between IQs of 100 and 120. Hence, the IQ scale does not possess equal intervals. Another attribute of a measurement scale is an absolute zero point. Absolute zero point is a value that indicates that a zero quantity of the attribute exists at that point or nothing at all of the attribute being measured exists. For example, a zero weight indicates no weight at all. However, in the case of intelligence and aggressiveness, one may assign zero score to a person, but it does not mean a point of an absolute absence of all intelligence or aggressiveness in the person. Keeping in mind these three characteristics of measurements, the measurement scales can be divided into four different types. Types of measurement scales. Number one, the first type is nominal or classificatory scale. It refers to the simple classification of objects or items into discrete groups, which do not bear any magnitude relationships to one another. Generally, numbering of houses, naming of streets, naming of persons and cars is done for convenience 
and not based on any of the three qualities mentioned above magnitude, equal intervals, and an absolute zero point. Some people do not regard normal scales as a scale at all. The second type of scales is ordinal or ranking scales. It reflects only magnitude and does not possess the attributes of equal intervals or an absolute zero point. For example, we may line up the students of a class according to heights and then instead of measuring them with a measuring tape, we merely rank them according to their height. Tallest receiving a rank of one, the next tallest a rank of two, etc. We may ask this teacher to rank the students of his class on cleanliness, regularity, studiousness, etc. Clearly, the scale has magnitude but does not possess equal intervals. The distance between ranks of 1 and 2 may not be equal to the distance between ranks of 3 and 4, and so on. Ranks 3 and 4, neither it has the attribute of an absolute zero point. Even if we may assign a rank of 0 to any person, it doesn't mean that he possesses a zero level of that characteristics. Another type of scales is we call interval scales. The interval scale possesses two out of three characteristics of a good measurement scale. That is magnitude and equal intervals, but lacks the real or absolute zero point. If you apply a meter scale to measure heights of the students in the instance mentioned here, we may find their heights to be 150 cm and 160 cm and so on. These measurements are on a scale with equal intervals. The distance of height between 150 cm and 160 cm is exactly equal to the distance of height between 170 cm and 180 cm. We can make some meaningful comparisons saying that Ram is 10 cm taller than Sham if their heights were 160 cm and 150 cm respectively. We can further say that object X is twice as long as object Y and so on. These types of scale allows the use of a large number of statistical analysis, while the ordinal and nominal scales permit only limited analysis. The measurement of temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is another example of interval scales. Although it allows for the comparison of intervals at different points of the scale, a zero degree F doesn't indicate an absolute absence of all heat. However, it allows for such statements that a particular day is twice as hot as another day. When the temperature was 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and 50 degrees Fahrenheit respectively. In psychological measurements, some assumptions are required. We have another type of scales which we say is the highest scales of measurement and these are called ratio scales. The scale of measurement which has all the three attributes, magnitude, equal intervals and an absolute zero point is called a ratio scale. The interval scale discussed here does not have an absolute zero point at which a complete absence of a particular property can be taken. An absolute zero point, which is an additional characteristic of ratio scales, means exactly being measured, nothing of the quantity being measured, whether it is a physical or a psychological variable that is concerned. Ratio scales are almost non existent in psychology and other social sciences, except in the area of psychological judgment. Ratio scaling allows for mathematical manipulation of multiplication, division, and taking of square roots, etc., and permit us to arrive at sensible results that can be verified in statistical techniques. We create meaningful zero points, such as at the mean of a distribution or at a difference of zero. 
deviations from these statistical generated zero points can be treated as ratio scale measurements. In simple words, all measures of central tendency like mean, mode and median, measures of variability like variance, standard deviation, etc., and various coefficients like coefficient of variation can be legitimately calculated for psychological data. Some assumptions are required in all these cases. Dear students, now I am going to show you table number one, which is about the characteristics and examples at a glance of measurement scales. This will give you a summary view of the entire module and this is, this is going to give you a clear idea of what we have discussed here. This table has several columns. The first column is serial number. The second column is the scale name. The third column is magnitude. The fourth column is equal intervals. The fifth column is absolute zero point. And then in the last column, we have given the examples. I am going to view all the four measurement scales under these headings. Now, number one is nominal scales. Under nominal scale, we find that magnitude is not present. We don't take into consideration of how much. We don't take into consideration the extent of the quality. Now, it doesn't have equal intervals. And then it doesn't have an absolute zero point. The only thing that we do is that we simply give names. We give room numbers. We give names of persons, house numbers, roll numbers, and so on. So this is uh, the nominal scale. We doesn't have any of the three attributes required in a scale. Now, number two, we have ordinal scales. This is higher than the nominal scale. And you will see magnitude is present. Then it doesn't have equal intervals, not present. Absolute zero point not present. So the last two attributes are not there. No equal intervals, no absolute zero point. We simply have the magnitude that is there in the scale. And we can use only ranks on students. We can rank them on any of the personality factors or any other thing like regularity, cleanliness, aggressiveness, or any other quality. This allows us to do some statistical techniques. We can use only mode and median can be used, and we cannot use any higher statistics when we are using this scale. When our data is on ordinal scale, we can use only mode and median and no higher statistics. The third type of scales are interval scales. These scales are higher than the ordinal scales and the nominal scales which you have mentioned here. Now these scales we find they have magnitude, they have equal intervals, but the only thing that is missing is the absolute zero point. And the examples for this type of scales are intelligence scores, personality scores, aggressiveness scores, and so on. This type of scale allows us the calculation of mean, mode, median, and standard deviation. We can calculate, but with certain assumptions. The last type of scales and the highest type of scales we call ratio scales. In these types of scales, the magnitude is present, equal intervals are present, absolute zero point is present. All the three important ingredients of measurement are present in these, these scales. Hence, these are the highest scales. On these scales, we can use all types of statistical indices, whatever mean, mode, median, standard deviation, 
we can calculate coefficients, we can do all mathematical jargon and we can do all types of calculations on this. All physical measurements like heights, weights, number of students in various classes, number of books possessed by students of a class. These are the examples of measurement scales. The students are advised to take a look at some of the instances that I am going to give you here, like the, the number of shirts you possess and your friends possess, the amount of money your daddy makes and others' dads make, what type of measurement scales are there that apply to these types of instances. If you go to a psychologist and you get yourself tested for aggressiveness, what type of scale will he be using? So you can have more instances of this type and you can, you can try to understand what type of scales we are using. It's, it's the best way to do is to have the highest scale that you can use so that all mathematical and statistical analysis can be done. Now, in conclusion, measurement scales is a highly useful concept in planning of research and lack of insight into this concept can lead to errors in designing the research and its statistical analysis. Thank you.